Well, I'm working on the diff today. Getting this thing done finally. That's been too long since I've driven her. It's only been a day. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, I used a couple of these magnets to friggin' get all the big metal chunks and stuff out. And worked pretty good. Now I just gotta get the friggin' brake clean out. And see what's left. Completely blocking your guys' ears. <laughs> My bad. The rest of the brake clean should just dissolve. Saturated. Frick. I'm debating leaving one of these magnets in the bottom of this thing so that uh, it can pick up all the little debris and stuff that I didn't get or wasn't able to get. There's still so many little chunks that they're still in here and I can't get them. Because of what happens is the magnet magnetizes the casing and then the metal flakes stick to the casing and they don't come out with the. Uh, the rest of it. That kind of sucks. One thing I did to this axle is I drilled each of these holes out and tapped them to a bigger size. Um, so now anything I put in the rear I have to drill out the uh, <coughs> I have to drill out the holes on that to match these. But Away she goes. Alright, so I got all the studs pulled out, except for the top two. I'm leaving those two in. I'll just friggin' bolt the thing on instead of studding it. Never had issues before. But right now I'm just cleaning up the, uh, the mating surface so that the RTV will stick. I need it to stick. <laughs> Nothing's more frustrating than when you put a diff in and uh, it leaks right away. So I'm just using some coarse friggin' sandpaper, emery cloth stuff. I already went around and scraped it all with a razor blade and got the majority of the crap off. This is just stuff that I couldn't quite get off with the razor blade. Now that you got it all sanded down, you're going to want to really make sure she's clean. Let's so use a bit of brake clean on a rag or a cloth or something. You cannot have any oil contamination or anything on this mating surface. Otherwise, uh, the RTV will not stick to it. It's got to be a totally clean surface. Okay, now I gotta do the same thing on the third member. All right, when I'm working with the third member, I like to hold it with my legs and then go around the outside. But first, I'm gonna wipe her down because she's got a bit of contamination and crap on her. And uh, then I'll just gum up the sandpaper real quick.
thing I love about brake clean is it dries almost instantly. So it's freaking good stuff. Of course, the rag's deteriorating. Even it's fluff and stuff everywhere. Cool, sandpaper time. And if at all possible, try to keep crap from getting down inside here. You can stuff rags or you could just be really careful going around the edges and stuff. This, it, if, as long as it's not like chunks of stuff, it's not that big a deal. But uh, you don't want like, say, a little chunk of metal or something going down in there. Not that you guys would have chunks of metal or nothing on there, but uh, just the more stuff you can keep out of the axle the better. And one more thing you should try to do is when you're cleaning up the holes, make sure that you get the inside of the hole. Um, on this face, get the inside part of the hole really good so that it seals there. That way you don't have to make sure, you don't have to be 100% uh, perfect when you're sealing the rest of it because you want to keep the oil in here and if it can get into where this hole is then it could bleed out where the bolt goes. It's just, just make sure you clean up the ring really good. face is cleaned up, I'll wipe her down with brake clean, and then uh, I think I'm ready to install it. Cool. Alright, well now that the mating faces are both cleaned up and like, free of debris and oil and stuff, uh, time for the RTV. I'm going to put the RTV on here because if I was to put it on the third member, you handle that a lot and uh, risk contaminating again so I'll just friggin put a good bead on there and then drop this in and then start bolting her down all right so when you're applying your RTV I like to go decent amount pretty generous with the stuff um, if you've got clean fingers what you can do is you can spread it around with your fingers I usually do that and it, uh, you can just control where it goes better. That might be enough. If it's not, I'll add more. Okay, so my finger is pretty clean. It's cleaner than it usually is, so I just spread it out. You can tell you've done a good job if this stuff does not lift off. You can see how it's sticking everywhere where I spread it, so it's probably the best one I've done yet. Just recently got that sandpaper though. <laughs> I like to get on this little angled lip thing right here as well, just just in case. It just offers a little more protection from leaks. I like to go a little bit heavier at the bottom just in case. Because you definitely don't want any leaks.
and it's not it's not as crucial at the top in my opinion because uh, seldom is there oil floating at the top unless you've rolled your truck and you're sitting upside down okay so now I'll install the third Tell you've done a good job if you can see uh, seeping around from the edges. <sighs> I think it's not light. V6 four pinion. <laughs> and you don't want to tighten all of the bolts down 100% yet. You want to go around and make sure that you seat this thing evenly first, just so that you don't squish all the RTV out one side. It's gonna suck going back to an open rear end, but great. I don't wanna have to change this thing out for a while. It's not fun. Not fun grenading the rear end. And I figured out why I blew uh, the driver's side rear axle seals because my uh, breather cap was plugged. I got it uh, ran up by the old gas door and it. Uh, she was a little bit caked with dirt. <laughs> I was very careful when I welded this, uh, these gusset braces on. Very careful not to uh, heat up the axle or the diff too much because you can't friggin' just straight weld it. You'll end up warping it and then, uh, then you'll be replacing axle seals every, at least every month. And yeah, it's just not good. Look who it is. Well, my old rotors are toast. They're just ruined. But I got these other ones, so uh, I don't know if I brought my press attachment, but uh, you gotta press the axles out to get the rotors off. Uh, it's a little bit different. But, uh, yeah, I just hope I remember my tool, because uh, otherwise I'm going to have to build another one, and I don't feel like doing that right now. Well, I need to cut this out, and I don't have a torch, so this outside piece won't be hard to cut out, but this ring in the middle will be pretty much impossible to cut out. I need a torch, so i got to wait till Monday. Yay! But uh, once I get this tool built, there will be nothing that will stop me, so, yeah. I can't reinstall these like this because, A, the rotor's shot, and B, so is the bearing. That's gross. Oh, yeah, look, you can see it's just pulling away there. Yeah, that's no good. She's ruined. Just ruined. Both of them are toast. Both rotors are toast. Both friggin' bearings are toast. Frick. So I guess I might start working on the calipers. See why they friggin' seized. Maybe I can fix them. Yeah, these things are toast. You can see in there. You can see that black uh, ring that's like a special kind of o ring or something. And then. Uh, that lip piece is supposed to be shiny like the back piece, it's not. They're all like that. These things are toast. Those caps were very difficult to get out. They're not supposed to be that difficult. So, I need two friggin' solid axle calipers. And a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Oh, I started cleaning up this axle. That's the uh, 
I think 82 to 84, I think. You can tell by the bottom truss, it doesn't go all the way to the springs, or all the way, I think the, on the 85s, it's the only one that goes all the way to the end. I don't know, actually, I'll be able to tell you right now. Yeah, see how mine goes all the way to the, right before the stops for the steering. So, uh, I think 80, 82 to 84 rings a bell. But uh, yeah, I started cleaning it up with my good old uh, freaking angle grinder wire wheel attachment. I cut off all the useless crap. And I started cutting off the spring perches. I think I'm going to set this axle up for links. I'll use this one as a tester. Um, and I'll also model my armor off of this one. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I just, I needed a, a change of pace. Working on this thing is just getting depressing because of how much money I see in uh, all the new parts I'm going to need. Yeah. Well, what do you think of that? I need to make the other top link bar, but uh, friggin' right. That looks pretty cool. The only thing is those top two mounts will need to be turned in just slightly. And then uh, that might be good. Maybe. I'll have to see. What ideally what I'd like to do is mock, like build a, a frame mock-up system, something that uh, would represent the frame. It would have the same uh, width dimensions and stuff as the frame, and then I can attach this to it and see how it works, see if it'll bind or how much it flexes, and all that good stuff. So. That's pretty cool. And then I found this thing. I packed this back from BC. Um, this looks like um, those Dodge uh, replacement lift pumps. I'm wondering if this might work in its place. 3.5 gallons per minute, 13.2 liters per minute, 12 volts, 40 psi. And it draws 6 amps, so I'm going to have to put a relay on this if I want to plug it into the into the stock Dodge uh, thing because the lift pumps on the Dodges they're apparently controlled by the ECM so yeah I'll have to see if I need a relay or not but yeah I think that would be really freaking awesome if, if this would work because then I don't have to buy a FAS not that that would be a bad thing but uh, if it saves me 280 to $350 and friggin' rates. Well guys, that'll do it for me tonight. Um, tonight is the last night for the giveaway, so I'll be checking the uh, video responses, and I think there's only three of you guys who entered. That kind of sucks, but uh, where she goes, I guess they want free stuff. But, uh, yeah, well, can't, I can't wait to see who wins it. I'm really actually quite excited to see. But my battery's blinking right there. It's blinking right there. So uh, I'll call her a night. Thanks for watching, guys. And until tomorrow, take care. I'll announce the winner tomorrow. All right, well, now that the ring gear's all cleaned up, I'm going to RTV print the ring gear. Holy crap. All right, so when you're doing... A ring gear. Holy crap.